Welcome to our first online service of the year 2022. And uh, we're delighted to have you with us. Uh, we are, of course, meeting in person at Bally McKenney Road, Drogheda today at 10 o'clock and at 12 o'clock. But if you can't be with us in those services, or if you did join us for those services and now you just want to catch up a little bit more on the message or whatever, you are so welcome. We're going to worship together and I would invite you to really worship. Please don't view this as being like watching a program but view it as being a service that you are participating in. So I invite you to worship with us now.
God, we thank you for your presence right now. We thank you, Lord, for the gift of gathering in your presence, Lord, and gathering in your midst, Lord. I thank you for even the situation that's going on right now, Lord. We're still here praising you, Lord. We thank you for the opportunity to praise you, Father. We thank you for you are faithful and you are kind and you are worthy of all our praises, Lord. For you are a good, good Father, Lord. And right now, we just surrender everything unto you, Lord every situation, every thought, everything that's going on around us, Lord, we just lay it at your feet, God. And we pray you take control. You take control of this service. You take control of this day, Lord. Just take control, Father. Thank you, Lord. Those who speak false seeking financial gain shall find that their greed will ensnare them in chains. The love of one's money is the root of all evil and brings only ruin, despair, and upheaval. So you, man of God, seek to fight the good fight. Eternal life's yours and you're in God's sight. In God, Lord of Lords and King of all Kings, who is the creator and rules everything. Tell all of the rich that hope does not lie in wealth but in God, and that friend is why they should seek to be generous in all of their deeds to build up the real treasure every man needs. I love thee in that you lie 
ice cold on my brow If ever I love thee My Jesus tis now Mansions of glory and endless delight I'll ever adore thee in heaven so bright I'll sing with a glittering crown on my brow if ever I love thee, my Jesus is now. Well, here we are. It's a new year and uh, God has given us as a church our theme for this year. We announced it on Friday night. We had a New Year's Eve service, 11 o'clock to midnight. Uh, we basically said goodbye to 2021 and we gave God thanks for all he had done in the year. But we also embraced the start of a new year. And uh, our theme for the year ahead is ever increasing glory. And, you know, that that theme came to me back in October. I was at a conference in Dubai, in the United Arab Emirates, and uh, gathered there together uh, with a number of other Christian leaders from around the globe. And as we were worshipping together, uh, there was no restrictions that we had to wear masks or anything like that. And I remember looking around that room as we were singing and praising, and I thought, wow, this is the first time in a year that I've been able to stand in a group of other Christians without having a mask on and just being able to praise Jesus like this. Uh, obviously, at that time, uh, we thought it was only going to be another week until all the remaining restrictions would be removed from churches uh, in Ireland. That had been the date that we had been given by the government. And then, of course, public health advice changed, new variants arrived, everything changed, and we're still masked up in our services. But as I was there praising God and uh, just really enjoying watching the joy of the Lord on, on these faces of so many brothers and leaders from across the globe, and uh, for most of them, this was the first time that they had been outside their own country since the pandemic had begun. And as I was uh, just looking at them, that phrase came to my mind, of with unveiled faces and I and I knew where that's from it's from 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 and so I immediately turned in my Bible I turned to 2nd Corinthians chapter 3 verse 18 where it says and we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit and as I read that, that phrase, ever increasing glory, just captivated my heart. And I said, Lord, I know when you're speaking. I just know that familiar uh, sense I get when you're revealing something to me directly. And uh, I thought, wow, is this what I'm going to preach on next Sunday when I get back home? Whenever we, whenever we have the final confirmation that all our regulations are going to be removed and we're going to be able to worship without masks back in Ireland again. And I felt the Lord speaking to me so clearly, saying, no, this is your theme for next year. And I'm saying, but, but Lord, this fits in with where we're at now. The masks aren't coming off next year. They're coming off next week. Oh, boy, was I wrong. But I just felt the Lord saying to me again, this is 
for next year. And I realized then that the Lord was sharing with me that this was to be the theme that we as a church were to pursue for the year of 2022 was ever increasing glory. Now, I, I think that's a, a marvelous theme. The problem is that so often we enter into new, a new year and sometimes our thinking is more magical than Christian or it's more bound up with luck than it is with the Word of God. Is it going to be a good year? Is it going to be a bad year? And you know, I saw a number of people, they said, we, th we all said 2020 was going to be a great year and then this pandemic came and it's been a lousy year. But the fact of whether a year is going to be great or not does not depend upon the circumstances. I can't imagine the Apostle Paul sat at the end of a year, sat on the 31st of December saying, oh Lord, please make next year a good one. No, Paul knew it was going to be a good year. Paul knew it was going to be the best year of his life. Why? Because Paul believed in a God who shares his ever increasing glory. Paul believed in a God of whom it was prophesied and said of the son in uh, the prophet Isaiah, of the increase of his government, there shall be no end. And so Paul knew that the next year was going to be great. Now, now the circumstances, well, you know what? He might be shipwrecked, but it was still going to be a great year. He might be thrown in prison, but it was still going to be a great year. He might be stoned nearly to death, but it, it's still going to be a great year. And he knows he's going to see the Lord's glory displayed in him and through him. And yet so often as Christians, we lapse into this magical thinking that a good year is just that a lot of nice things happen to us. It's almost like a winning the lotto mentality. And as Christians, we need to break out of that. And I believe this with all my heart, that God would say to you that this next year, he wants it to be the greatest year of your life. Right up to this point, he wants it to be the greatest year of your life, 2022. But that does not depend on the circumstances that happen to you. But it depends upon us pursuing God's ever-increasing glory and experiencing that in our lives. Because he does promise that when we seek, we shall find. Now, we are going to get into 2 Corinthians chapter 3, where Paul talks about the ever-increasing glory. But before we do so, I would just want to bring a salutary word of warning. And it's the last verse of 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 17, where Paul says this, Unlike so many, we do not peddle the word of God for profit. On the contrary, in Christ we speak before God with sincerity as those sent from God. You know, I want to issue a word of warning as we enter a new year because there is foolishness abroad in the body of Christ. There is a gullibility. There are people who are following foolish fables and religious con men rather than the clear word of God. You know, just the other week I was uh, planning out some of our videos on, on our YouTube channel and uh, you get all kinds of suggestions coming up in your feed. And this suggestion came up from a well-known ministry saying, Listen to what this a horse said to this guy in heaven. It will melt your heart. And I, I, I admit, when I looked at it, first of all, I thought it was a joke or a parody. But when I looked at it, it came from a large, well-known ministry. And it was basically all about this guy who says he died and went to heaven and saw all kinds of things. And this particular video was about what he said a horse said to him in heaven. Now, please... Listen to what it, now the, the title of it was, listen to what this horse said to this man in heaven, it will melt your heart. Please let me tell you this, if you are going to base anything in your life on what a guy says a horse said to him in heaven, it's not your heart that's melted, it's your brains. You know, for Christians to be so gullible to swallow that kind of stuff is a crying shame, and when that happens, it's no wonder that the world laughs at us. And also at New Year, there's an immense amount of, uh, of peddling, peddling the word for profit. People sending out messages saying things like 2022. If you send us $2,022, God's going to bless you this year. And I just want to say, please do not be caught up in any of that nonsense. Now, the fact is, as a church, we believe in giving. 
We believe in tithing. We don't believe in manipulation. We don't believe in hanging threats of curses over people's head. But we do believe that there is a promise and a blessing in the tithe. And we do believe that it's a great way for God's people to pull together as a community and uh, finance the preaching of the gospel and the sharing of their faith together and their worship together. So uh, we do believe in that. But I would urge you to please flee from these money-making rackets and don't send those people your money. You know, when you do so, you become a part of them and their condemnation, you'll begin to have a share in that. So please don't be taken in by such foolishness or such evil manipulation of God's people by those who are trying to line their pockets. Prophets, P-R-O-F-I-T-S, not prophets, P-R-O-P-H-E-T-S. But then we get into 2 Corinthians chapter 3. And Paul says, he says this, Are we beginning to commend ourselves again? Or do we need, like some people, letters of recommendation to you or from you? You yourselves are our letter, written on our hearts, known and read by everyone. You show that you are a letter from Christ, the result of our ministry, written not with ink, but with the spirit of the living God, not on tablets of stone, but on tablets of human hearts. Please listen. We don't need endorsements. That's what Paul's saying. We don't need endorsements from apostles and well-known preachers. We don't need titles and letters after our name. All we need to authenticate us is that God is working in your lives, says the Apostle Paul, because we have ministered to you and poured out our love and our grace and our truth into you. And you know, ultimately, the letters that Jesus is really matters is not what a horse says to somebody in heaven. It's not what the latest big name revelation is in a big service somewhere. It's actually the letters that are lived out in our lives by the glory of God shining through us. And that's what this year should be all about. And, and Paul says this in verse 12 of 2 Corinthians 3. Therefore, since we have such a hope, we are very bold. We are not like Moses who had put a veil over his face to prevent the Israelites from seeing the end of what was passing away. And in verse 18, he says, And we all who with unveiled faces contemplate the Lord's glory are being transformed into his image with ever-increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the Spirit. We're not talking about the fading remnants of a past glory, because that's what we're talking about with Moses. When Moses wore the covering over his face, you see what it was, he had been with God and there was a glory shining from his face. But then as he went through the day, that glory faded. And uh, Moses took to wearing a veil over his face so people would not see the fading glory fading from off of his face. But the Bible says that we as Christians do not have a fading glory. That means that as Christians, we should never be able to look back and say, wow, I really loved Jesus back then five years ago. Or I really felt the presence of God back when I first got saved. I wish I could feel like that again. God wants that this year, this month, this day, that we would experience his presence as never before and we will experience his glory as never before. And that's, I believe, what God was saying to me in Dubai back in October. That I was getting all worked up about us being able to take our masks off when we worshipped in a service. And we could see each other's faces. But God wants us to take our spiritual masks off. God wants us, you know, if we, God wants the first demasking that has to take place is that we stop any pretense be, of being what we're not, that we stop any pretense or any obstacle that comes between us and God and would separate us from seeing his glory and receiving his glory. That means we need to pursue ever-increasing intimacy with God because when we have ever-increasing intimacy with God, we have ever-increasing glory. And what I really want to encourage us to do is to begin to think about what would that look like? What will ever-increasing glory look like in our lives? You see, this is not a lotto winner message. This is not a message saying, wow, you're going to have an amazing year. All these amazing, beautiful and crazy and fantastic things are going to happen to you because you're so lucky. No, 
This is saying this, that if we will truly pursue the glory of God, then we will experience ever increasing glory in our lives and in our homes and in our church and in our community. And that's not a lotto winner message. That's a transformation message. And so what we really want to encourage over these over these next 12 months is that together as a church, we will pursue God's glory as never before. And I want to invite you to dream about that. Because, you know, dreaming about what can be is an incredible thing. Sometimes people think it's a waste of time. We say, stop daydreaming. But actually, the Bible says that uh, your old men will dream dreams, your young men will see visions. It's, it's okay to dream about what God's got in store for us. Martin Luther King, uh, he looked at a society that was fractured by racism and discrimination. And he said, I have a dream. I have a dream that one day children will play together without worrying about the color of their skin. And he, he reeled off a whole load of things that were part of his dream. And you know, the vast, that, now there's still racial problems in the United States, but I tell you what, Martin Luther King's dream came true. It was fulfilled because he dared to dream about how things could be. And we, as the people of God, need to dream this year. We need to dream about God's ever-increasing glory. Take, take prayer. What would it be like for God's ever-increasing glory to be manifested in my prayer life? How different would my prayer life look? A lot of Christians struggle to just spend a few minutes a day in prayer. I thank God God has been speaking to us as a church about prayer over these last two years. We've got the 24-7 prayer that we maintain uh, all, day and night. And we've been doing that now for about a year and nine months. But you know what? God wants us to go beyond that. God wants our prayer not just to increase in the amount of time we're praying, but in the intimacy with him, in the quality of our prayer. I want you to think about that. Just dream about my prayer times with God. How different would my prayer times with God be when God releases his ever-increasing glory into my prayer life. And I would invite you to dream about that. In fact, you know, prayer doesn't have to be just asking for stuff. Prayer doesn't have to be just praying in tongues nonstop for an hour. And I would really encourage you to go to our 24-7 prayer rotor on the, it's on the church website, it's on our Facebook page, and just click on the link and maybe put yourself in for an hour. But spend that hour in the presence of the Lord, and why don't you try praying this way? Say, God, would you please help me to, for the next hour to dream about how different my prayer life can become whenever your ever-increasing glory is manifested there. I truly believe that if we would pray like that, it would be absolutely transformational. What about God's glory increasing? I'm speaking now as a married man. What about God's glory being ever increasing in my marriage, in my family relationships as a father and a grandfather. What will that look like? What would the impact of God's glory look like in my family when God's ever increasing glory is released in my marriage and my family? I'm thinking about my witness to other people. When I try to share Jesus with people and, you know, uh, I have privileged position in that through Evangelical Alliance, I'm able to speak to national and governmental leaders as well uh, about the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I'm asking Jesus, and I'm really getting before him this year and saying, Lord, how different is my witness going to look? How much more effective is my witness going to be when I'm pursuing and experiencing your ever increasing glory in my life? Thinking about our church services. You know, our church services have, oh my goodness, we've had to change a lot of things in the last two years. We've had to adapt to what's going on around us. And that's okay. You know, God's not tied to just operating one way in a service. And I, I guess whenever coronavirus began, I was already asking him, well, God, how are our church services when we're able to meet with all these restrictions and distancing? How, how's it going to look? How, how different is that going to be? But I want to tell you this year, I'm coming to God and I'm saying, Lord, how different are our church services going to look when your ever-increasing glory is being released in our services? 
What's that going to involve? When your ever-increasing glory is poured out in healing and sick people, whenever your ever-increasing glory is used to bring joy to replace fear and depression and anxiety in people's lives and hearts, how, how is that going to make our services look different? We need to dream about that. We need to dream about our community as a church. How are we going to impact the community round about us? How different are people going to see the church that live around us? Our neighbours, even around our church building and our neighbours beside the homes where we live. If we truly are those living letters that Paul talked about, and if, I, if God's ever-increasing glory is being released in us, and we're not just going around showing people a fading glory like Moses did of how things used to be, but we've got an ever-increasing glory shining forth, from us and we're bold about that and we're not ashamed about that then what's that going to do in our community round about us i can't wait to see that i'm thinking about our children our, our uh, as we raise our children and our children's services at church and how we raise our children in our homes how different is that going to look when god's ever increasing glory is released i'm thinking about our youth as well our youth ministry and we're delighted to see that growing and developing once more in the church but how different is our youth ministry going to look when God's ever-increasing glory is being poured into our youth you know there's so much more I could go on about here and time does not permit me to do so but I would say to you please look at your life look at your priorities look at what's on your heart and dare to dream dream about God's ever-increasing glory now today, of course, Sunday, uh, 2nd of January, is a day of prayer. A lot of people, a lot of churches all over Ireland are observing this as a day of prayer and fasting. And I would encourage you to do that today. And, and really today, make you know, as you seek his face, make it a day of prayer and fasting and say, God, what's your ever-increasing glory going to look like in my life? You know what? I had a revelation in Dubai that totally took me by surprise. That I was looking at a Bible verse and expecting it to mean one thing. And God just said, hang on, look closer, look closer. And I believe the Lord's going to do that with us. And I pray that today and the days ahead and this year as you pursue his ever increasing glory, I pray that that will be a time of revelation and joy and fulfillment. And I can't wait to see how different things are going to be for me for you and for our church. So may God bless you and guide you. Lord, I pray for each person that's watching this online service, and I pray you will begin to speak into their hearts and enable them to dream great dreams and imagine what your ever-increasing glory is going to look like in so many different areas of our life. We pray this in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. Look, thank you so much for joining us for this online service. I just quickly want to share with you a, a few notices. We've already said today is, of course, a day of prayer and fasting. And to help you do that, there is a website. You can visit thykingdomcome.ie. And if you check out that website, you'll find some resources there for helping you pray and seek God's face today. Uh, we have no Monday night meeting tomorrow night. Uh, so we've not restarted our Monday nights yet. We are, of course, continuing with our, everything online now. Uh, so there will be the Take Fives every day this week. Uh, we'll have our Wednesday night online Bible study upon this rock. That will be at 7.30 on Wednesday night. And uh, we all, of course, Sunday online service again next Sunday. I've already mentioned our in-person services are continuing every Sunday at 10 a.m. and 12 noon. During both those services, we have uh, we have children's church taking place concurrently in the porter cabin next door. And during our 12 o'clock service, we have the youth. Uh, they have their service upstairs in the youth room. And uh, thank you for all of you that are giving to the church. Many of you are giving online and praise God for that. We encourage you to continue with that. Uh, the IBAN and the big numbers and all that are up on the screen. You can also give by PayPal. There's a link for that on our website, www.solidrock.ie. 
and uh, also if you prefer to give uh, with cash or check we'll come to one of our in-person services we don't pass an offering basket around but we do have boxes on the back walls beside the exits and you can always put uh, cash or check as an, a tithe or an offering put it in an envelope and stick it in one of those boxes but whatever way you choose to give thank you for your faithfulness in what has been very difficult circumstances in keeping the word of God going forth keeping the bills paid, keeping the church doors. Uh, well, even when they've been closed, we've still been able to retain possession of our building. We've met the mortgage payments. We've done everything we need to do. And we give God all the glory for that. And thank you for your faithfulness. And as for the, uh, we've already mentioned several times, the 24-7 prayer, do check that out. The link is on our website. It's also on our Facebook page, Solid Rock Drogheda. And it'd be wonderful if you could just book in for an hour of prayer and really uh, sit with God and let him help you dream what his ever-increasing glory is going to look like. And now we're going to close by saying the grace together. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. And surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.